Hello, I'm Paul Beckwith, and I'm continuing <coughs> my discussion, excuse me, on atmospheric rivers. So in 1861-62, there was a mega flood in California, which uh, inundated the Central Valley. If that happened today, and it's just a matter of time before it does happen, in fact, it's got a higher risk of happening than a uh, major earthquake in California, yet most people living there and elsewhere uh, are unaware of the risks from this uh, occurrence. And instead of being a one in 100 or 200 year event, because we've warmed the planet well, over a degree already, there's, seven, there's a lot more water vapor in the atmosphere, 7% more water vapor in the atmosphere than there was that's per degree of warming. Then the risk of the atmospheric rivers occurring um, is three times higher. So instead of every 100 to 200 years, it's expected to be you know 35 to 65 year event. We haven't had it since 1861-62, so we're we're long overdue. Um, odds are better than even that it's going to happen um, in the next uh, 30, 40 years. Okay, so I'll get back to where I left off in my previous video. So. This is from the paper, um, Atmospheric Rivers Drive Flood Damages in the Western United States. Um, so Google that title, it's open source, 2019 paper. And this is an atmospheric river here, just off the coast of California, and then it came ashore. So this is, uh, it, this is um, the, um, the IVT is integra integra Integrated Vapor Transport. So it's an idea of the, of the transport, the amount of water and uh, the transport rates of the water. And when it came ashore in California, um, you know, it came, it, this is over a period of, uh, so this is December 30th to January 19th. So right here, the rain started, it was January 1st, and it papered off about two weeks later. So this was a two week event. Now imagine this happening for 45 days at higher intensity and inundating the entire Central Valley of California because that's the type of event that we're, we're expecting. Okay, so this is a smaller one. So here's the IVT. This is the precipitation in centimeters, you know, um, per day. So lots of peaking here about January 9th. This is the stream flow in rivers in that region and flood stage here. So surpassing flood stage uh, a couple times. And this is the insured losses in this region from this particular event in January of 1995. So these are the most damaging atmospheric river events in California, 1978 to 2017. Okay, so you can see the, the and this goes by, so, so we've got the landfall region, landfall latitude, the atmospheric river category. Okay, so there's category five, December 2007, and a bunch of category fives here and here. Okay, so category fives aren't as common. Um, they go by the peak um, IVT, integrated vapor transport, and you can see the highest number here, 1258 in December 2nd, 2007. Okay, a number of over a thousand events, and those are category fives, and then the category fours are, uh, you know, 900, 900, 870. Okay, so these are the um, claims, insurance claims, these are insured losses, and this is total damages in billions of dollars. So this is from the highest damage to the lowest damage. So this was a category four atmospheric river you know, with a peak not as high as the max, the one in 2007, but the duration must have be lasted longer because the damages were 3.7 billion in that event, as opposed to 2.5 billion in the 2007 event. Okay, uh, let's just keep going. This is the proportion of insured losses in different regions of California due to the atmospheric rivers. So if you go along the coastal regions here, you know, we're well over 90% here, okay? We dropped to the 80s in this region, 70s, 60s, you know, even over, so very, very far inland, like in this region, it's still 84% of the insured losses are due to atmospheric river events. And this is in all seasons, okay? So this is, so 
California is dependent on, ab on atmospheric rivers to get its snowfall, to replenish the snow on the mountains, the Sierra, near Sierra Nevada snowpack, coastal mountain snowpack, but also on its rainfall, which f then feeds the rivers into the Central Valley, which is a fertile you know, crop growing region. So they're, uh, they're two sides of a coin. They're required for the, about half of the watt precipitation in California, but when they get too big, um, they can flood out, they can cause lots of landslides, they can cause torrential rains, they can cause huge problems in California. This is top counties, proportion of losses caused by atmospheric rivers in top counties. So for example, Sonoma, California, 99.8% of the insured losses are from atmospheric river events, okay? And uh, they've got the damage numbers here, total damages and atmospheric river damages. So almost all of them, you know, all the, to all of the damage there is due to atmospheric rivers essentially, okay? And there's a, a fraction in other places, okay? Which is given here. Okay, so this is the categories of atmospheric rivers. So. There's two parameters here. There's the maximum IVT, kilograms per meters per second, and it's in 250 increments. So above 250, 250 to 500, um, okay, 500 to 750, et cetera. And then this is the duration of the event. So one day or 24 hours, two days, three days. And so it's a combination of these two factors, the intensity and the duration. And then these are the categories, um, category one, AR, atmospheric river, category five here. So above 1250, it's category four if it's only lasting one day, or category five if, if it's lasting lo longer than one day. Okay, so, and, the, so, and then the, uh, you know, exceptional event, extreme, strong, the definition. So this is very, very comparable to the categories for for hurricanes. Now, th these are typical flood damages by the category of atmospheric rivers. So this is a, a category one up to category five, atmospheric rivers. This is the number of events. Um, this is the, I don't know the time scale. Um, how many years is this over? But <coughs> this is the statistics anyway, number of events. As you get smaller events, you get more of them, of course, and then it tapers down as you get larger events, um, expected distribution. And, you know, we're, we're, we're 1 billion, you know, 100 million. Um, this would be maybe about uh, 20 or 30 million and above is, and then the error bars are here. So this is the highest category five atmospheric river event. These guys here, and then it tapers down here. So in the 1861 to 62 event, it lasted for 45 days and there was tremendous damages. Okay, this is the statistics, um, November to March in millions of dollars. So the category one to five, number of events, right, decreasing. Okay, that's the number here in brackets. And the uh, dollar cost, um, for each of these events, okay? So category five events, uh, you know, three billion and plus in the dollar cost. Okay, so this is a key paper on the damages. Okay, so I'll move on here. Um, there's increasing precipitation volatility in California. Now, it's, it's, a, it's a Mediterranean climate. That's how it's designated. These climates are particularly susceptible to rapid shifts between drought and flood. I call it weather wilding or weather weirding. Um, then uh, Catherine Hayhoe uh, stole my terms. Maybe she didn't realize it um, and, and uh, causes it like global weirding or global wilding. You know, she starts to use these terms, which is fine. People copying you is the, is the uh, most uh, uh, significant um, form of flattery, I'm told. California's rapid transition from record multi-year dryness. Okay, so for example, 2011 to 2016, early 2017, massive mega flood in California. And then in 2016, 2017, very, very wet winter, replenished all the snowpacks, etc. 
1861 to 62 was the mega flood event, 45 days of rain. Um, the two decades prior to that were extremely dry. Now with climate change, th this shifting from dry to wet events is expected to happen more and more. Okay, um, anthropogenic forcing is found to yield large 21st century increases in the frequency of wet extremes, including a more than threefold increase in subseasonal events comparable to California's Great Flood of 1862. Okay, so the statistics on this flood used to be a one in a hundred to two hundred year event. Now it's three times more frequent. It's one in 35 to 65 year events. It hasn't happened since 1862. Um, it rained for 45 days and submerged the Central Valley of California and uh, basically left cities like Sacramento 15 feet underwater, destroying all of, mostly all of the buildings in those regions. Okay, uh, the dry extremes are, there's an increase in dry extremes as well. 25% to 100% increase in extreme dry to wet precipitation events is projected. Okay, so this is the weather whiplashing is going to get a lot worse. Now they did a model um, for a major earthquake, a 7.8 earthquake all along the San Andreas Fault. And uh, the USGS did that work and then they did the same thing for the so-called arc storm scenario, atmospheric river, a thousand K, the K is a thousand, right? Kilo storm scenario. So they modeled it. Um, they modeled the scenario of this atmospheric river and what it would do in terms of causing massive and devastating flooding in California today. So the earthquake one was the shakeout and the arc storm is the atmospheric river event. And they tried to get it analogous to, to the floods, the, the, to the rainfall causing the floods in California in 1861 and 62. Okay, and with magnitudes projected to become more frequent and intense as a result of climate change. So experts from NOAA, Scripps, State of California, USGS, California Geological Society, FEMA, et cetera. National Center for Atmospheric Research, Colorado, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And they, so they, they tried to model it, pattern it after the 1861 to 62 mega flood, but it used modern modeling and data from, so they used data from large storms. In 1969, there was a large storm in California and um, mostly in, you know, one, one half the state, and in 1986, there was a massive storm in the other half of the state, so they combined the data, and that, you know, would have 25 days of rainfall, so not as severe, maybe half as severe as the 1861 to 62 event, okay, and these atmospheric rivers, they approach the ferocity of hurricanes and then slam into the U.S. Uh, west coast over several weeks, they're narrow regions in the atmosphere responsible for most of the horizontal transport of water vapor outside of the tropics. Okay, and these are the key findings that they got. Megastorms are California's other big one. A severe California winter storm could realistically flood thousands of square miles of urban and agricultural land, something like 18,000 square miles in the 1861 to 62 event. There'd be thousands of landslides, Lifelines disrupted throughout the state, roads, power, gas, everything for days or for week, days or weeks, and on the cost of $725 billion. Okay, of this number, $400 billion would be property damage and $325 billion in business interruption losses. Uh, it would, uh, over a million and a half people would have to be evacuated. If it was a whole Central Valley, it would, we're talking 6 million people. Flood depth, 10 to 20 feet, there'd be lots of casualties. To give you an idea, this 725 billion number, uh, Katrina cost was about 166 billion. Uh, Hurricane Harvey, so that's in 2005. Hurricane Harvey in 2017, 140 billion. So we're talking 725 billion. The arc storm would be a statewide disaster. It would be a country disaster. And I'll continue in another video. Thanks for listening. Please go to paulbeckwith.net and support my work with a donation.
uh, to my to pay my PayPal account. Thanks again.